Right, finally, we've uh, we had a few technical difficulties. Um, Clyde, listen, um, does, does people have an opinion, certain opinions of your friend, Mr. Paul Sykes? How many prisons were you in, actually? In with him? Three. Three, Old, can you name them? Old, Armley, and Durham. Right. So, do you do you understand? I mean, obviously I do, but I've got to um, kind of put, put the facts out. I know the ins and outs. Um, obviously, you do because you were around. I I interviewed fifty for the first book, thirty four for the second book, and one for the um, the top chief of West Yorkshire Police because the final book was my was my summing up on kind of many years of research and such a character. Yeah. But where do you think these kind of allegations of Paul Sykes, the, the rapist, the nonce, you, you were there with him. <clears throat> you were in prison with him for many, many times. I've spoken to the likes of Chris Lambianu, lived next door to him for three years. Uh, I've spoken to Charles Bronson. I've spoken to Eddie Richardson. I've spoken to so many people. I've spoken to prison governors, screws. But you were in there, Clyde. So can you give me your thoughts on it? Well, I think all these rumours came about when YPs were messing about. And to stop them from messing about, I just think they turned around and said to YPs that if you don't behave yourselves, we're going to put Sykes in with you. And the screws might have started all these rumours off about Sykes. Uh, tampering with YPs uh, just to get them to behave themselves, but it never, it never ever happened in jails what I'd been in or any other jail. Because, like I've said before on my podcasts, if Sykes would have got bent any YP or or anybody like that, knocked him out. It had been shanghai from jail. Like, they wouldn't stand for it. And all this, what people said, that cons were too scared to go down to office and bubble him up. It's a load of bollocks, because once they'd tell the screws, they'd be on him like a fucking tramp on chips. Do you know what I mean? They'd, they'd grab him and ghost him out as soon as possible. Or, he'd be, or at the very least, it'd be damn block. Mm. <clears throat> um. I mean, I've spoken to a lot of people, you know, I think it's fair, it's fair to say, I mean, I've spoken to John Spensley, Delroy Showers, um, you know, I've been, I've been in prison to visit his son, and the, their attitude was, their opinion was, listen, if he was here now, I mean, Paul Jr. said to me, listen, if our dad was here now, we'd say, yes, I have I had sex with men. Um, that's a big, big difference to actually... Uh, you know, being this kind of sexual deviant. Um, you know, I've spoken to so many people, Clyde, and what well, where's all the victims? Because I wouldn't keep it quiet, would you, if, if that happened to you? Nah, well, I can you? You can't, can you? Like, it's a load of bollocks, Jamie. Trust me, it's a load of bollocks. Like, like I said before, I've been in showers with him, I was in showers with him at 22 years old, and there were other like guys my age in showers with him. And not once did he ever try to fuck about with anybody. It's it's a load of bollocks, and it's just people spreading vile rumors. And what pisses me off more about it on these podcasts is like they're saying these things, and the people who are subscribed to them are believing it. But the mm. guy's dead. He's not here to protect himself and look like answer all these fucking idiots what are spreading these rumours. Do you know what I mean? Like it's mm. it's disgusting, really. Yeah. Um. I mean, what kind what kind of relationship did you have with him, Clyde? I know you. <clears throat> I know you were quite um quite close to him, and I've seen your picture where I think he he, he describes you as one of the the fittest men. Strongest men Yorkshire's ever had. You were a weightlifter. How yeah, how was he when you served all them all them years in prison in Durham, in Hull, in in Armley? Was he as fierce as the documentaries in the books there? Oh yeah, it, it was what it said on the can. Like uh, 
Sykes were most probably fittest when he were in jail. Uh, and like he boxed uh, something like 16, 16 and a half stone. But when he were in jail training, he were walking about 18, 18 and a half stone. Uh, yeah, everything's true. He, he, he's, how I can describe him is, do you know when a gunslinger walks into a saloon? Yeah. And everything goes quiet. He had that kind of aurora. Mm. Uh, yeah, you knew when he was about. Mm. Um, I, I mean, <clears throat> did you did you even see any of, of Paula kind of indulging in homosexual activity? No, <laughs> did a fuck no, not one bit. Like I said before, um, I never even saw him. Touch anybody in showers, you know what I mean, or make comments about it. It's a load mm. of crap, Jeremy. There's not, like you said, there's not one person's what what's come forward and said that he did this to me, he did that to me. Mm. You get people coming forward saying he chimed me and things like that, but not, but definitely not. He's like tampered with me or all like that. It's mm. not true, mate. I mean, do you, do you think he was? Um, obviously, you knew him very well. Do you think he was mentally unbalanced? That's a bit of a stupid question. But if he was here now in the twenty-first century, do you think that they'd find all sorts of him? Was he mad or was he bad? Sykes uh, was very intelligent, and he could he could have a row, Paul. Like, yeah, maybe this day and age, he wouldn't have gone to prison. Did the most probably. Put him in Broadmoor or something, or Rampton, or Grendon or something, do you know what I mean? Because there was something definitely not switched on with him. Definitely. But that, there's an old saying in there, there's a fine line between a, a complete idiot and a genius. Do you know what I yeah. mean? <clears throat> do you know what? I was with John Spencer the other day, and uh, he knew him, and he said, Paul was a genius. But he said, if you put him... Dude, put him so simple, like in charge of a news agency, he'd wreck it, he'd beat all the customers up and he'd smash it up. But put him in a put him in a pub team, a million like a quiz, and he'd do it by himself. And yeah. He said he knew all the, the geography and just ridiculous things where you think, How the hell would you know that? And he just you know, I, I mean I, I spoke to one of his wives. And he said, I don't know how true this, but he reckons for me, for all them years in prison, Clyde, he read three or four books a week. I'm not talking about thin books, I'm talking about proper books. Yeah. Do you think can you do you have that any memories of him doing that? He would always read him, Paul. Like if I if I were gonna gym with him, like, or if I would uh, I'd go to his door and like go to his spy or maybe I wanted to talk to him about something and every single time I went to see him, he was reading. It was were, it were really well, well read, Paul. Do you mm. know what I mean? He was fucking, he, he was a clever man. He was clever. Uh, but he was a fucking lunatic as well. You know what I mean? Which mm. is dangerous, really. To have them yeah. kind of Can you take me back, Clyde, to the first time you ever heard the name Paul Sykes? Yeah, I, I was in what it were. I was in Springwood in Sheffield. So that's where I'm from. And I was only 16 years old. And this black Rolls Royce pulled up outside. And I didn't know who they were. But they were David Dunford, Delroy Showers, uh, Ronnie Telfer, John Wynn. And they were Paul Sykes. Now, David Dunford had had some bollocks with a guy called Freddie Bonzo, who was a big guy. And they, well, I think he'd, well, he, what I know now, he's obviously brought Sykes down to sort him. <coughs> Freddie weren't in. Uh, but that was the first time I met him. But the first time I was introduced to him properly, was about two weeks later after that, and my mate Dave Lee, who's dead now, uh, he fetched him in Springwood, and he introduced me to him, and from that day on, 
up to him dying, we were pals. Do you know what I mean? I won't mm. say we were great friends. Well, we, we were friends, yeah, because, like, uh, it didn't matter. If I went to see him and it didn't matter what was happening in house at time, uh, he'd let me in and we'd talk and we'd go for a drink. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, we were friends, me and Paul, uh, not just pals. Uh, yeah, that was the first time I really had a conversation with him when Dave was there. But after that, like, we were friends and we used to see each other quite a bit. What, what was he like under the influence of alcohol? I mean, obviously, you know, <clears throat> you spent many times drinking with him in pubs. Was there ever a time, Clyde, where, Clyde when you were like, fucking hell? Uh, yeah, he's Fiery guy, fiery guy, uh, and obviously having a few drinks would make him even more fierier. Uh, if somebody was staring at him, like I said on my last podcast, like well, like a dog when when its hair goes up on its bike. Mm. But I could I could see these um, reactions, and I could like just mention it to him, calm down, like no, there's nobody here gonna fucking cause any bollocks with her or like that. But even we are drink Paul, like he, he could he could spark, you know what I mean? He were one of them guys what didn't give a shit and if you started beating you up, he's gonna beat you up. There's not you weren't really a stop button until you were fast asleep, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um I mean obviously you you spent a lot of time. I've I've read your book, Clyde. Um, you know, it's fair to probably say at times in your, your life you were probably a professional criminal. Um, you know, you were kind of wheeling and dealing, and you had a lot of involvement with Paul Sykes in prison and on the outside. Yeah. Um, did you did you kind of see him having having a lot of kind of ructions and fights and all that kind of thing? I I, I didn't really see him fight outside. Uh outside prison like I saw him fight a few times in uh, jail in Leeds uh, which I, t I said on my last one with that guy from all in uh, at Play, Freddie Mills mm. uh, uh, I never saw anybody what could angle him really uh, it didn't matter who they were like he, he just went through them like butter he was a big guy, he was a big, strong guy, but he also knew how to fight, do you know what I mean? And that's the difference, you see. Mm. See, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of people now coming on the internet saying, oh, I went up and I offered him out. And I, I, you know what, right? So if that if that kind of played out, what would have, what would have been the situation if someone had went to Paul's pub and put it on him? If somebody had gone to Paul's pub and put it on him, he would have gladly obliged. Brian Cockrell, who I am led to believe has never, ever met Sykes eh? mm -hmm. And he says that he went to a pub, offered Sykes he are, and Sykes he would not come outside the pub. Yeah. Now, if I had to come all the way from North East to have a Sykes, to, and have a Brian Cockrell to have a fight with Sykes there, whether he'd come out the pub or not, I'd have been in that pub to have a fight with him. Because it's a mm. long way to travel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a load of bollocks. He never did that. Uh, yeah. And I, I've been following his uh, podcasts, and I quite liked him at first, uh, and I was getting into his podcast, but once he started slating Sykes there, Mm. And he, he, he was slating him about being a prison rapist. And then he was saying, like, that he'd been to Wakefield to have a fight with him. And I've commented on his podcasts. He's not ever answered one of my questions. And also, I've offered to do a podcast with him to put things straight. And he hadn't even answered that. Mm. Because he knows... That it's a load of bollocks what he's talking about. And you can mm -hmm. tell as well when he's talking. Like, he talks right fast. He's using his hands a lot, you know what I mean? His eyes are up in there thinking what to say next. He's a... 
And to say he's like gone into God and all that and he's slating a dead man off, Harry can talk about him and now he's not here like he like he in. Uh, I find it yeah. really... Um, do you know what I think it is? It's, you know, I met you five years ago. You were one of the first people um, who found out the contract was signed. Uh, you know, <clears throat> them, that book, them books have been signed that... I mean, obviously, me and another person, we've done so much research. So the information from them three books, is, 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 there's basically been a film that's come from that. So the, the, the script has been written by Leo Bill and Vaughan Civil. So basically, these people who you're talking about are kind of trying to sabotage our film, our documentary. Um, you know, it, it, that's clearly what it is. Um, you know, I mean, do you? Can you see? Could you see the Paul Sykes film happening years ago, Clyde? What's your opinions on him now? There's going to be a film. There's going to be a documentary. Uh, <coughs> might not have happened years ago, but I think he well deserves it now because, like, he, like they've made films about Bronson. They've made films about Lenny McLean. Uh, he's the he's he's in the same category as them. Uh, yeah, he deserves his book, uh, his film. And um, mm. I think it'll do well as well. Yeah, he deserves it's, it. You know what? It's a totally unique story. I mean, I fell down the rabbit hole 10 years ago. You know, spent three years kind of thinking, why is not... And, and then I walked in the story. I walked in the documentary. I walked in Sweet Agony. I met all the characters. Um, you know, it's... I mean, how big do you think that can be, Clyde? It's... It's certainly a proper unique story. And the, 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 the saddest thing it is, um, it, was, it was a real story. I mean, I can tell you, the film's going to start from 1989 and it's going to finish in 2007. So, obviously, the actor, Paul Sykes, is 73. Sorry, 73, 43 there. Um, one of the, I mean, there's two people in the candidate, but the one... That was kind of chosen five years ago. Um, he's about that age now. You've seen a yeah. picture of him, moustache, dark hair. He knows he's going to have to box, put weight on. But it's like looking at Paul, isn't it? I mean, he's even... Yeah, he's a dead um, ringer. I put, I put his quote on the page yesterday. I was reading some of his Twitter comments to me in private. And uh, he said, you know what? It, I'm aware it's going to take a challenging role. Um but, you know, it's it's kind of social justice where life come back on him and all the bad things happen to, to him. Clyde, did you have much interaction with Paul towards the end? Uh, yeah, because, like, I went to see him with a pal of mine, but he lived in a flat, and I, I, I hadn't seen him for uh, two or three years beforehand. And when I went in this flat, he wasn't. He wasn't the same guy. Do you know what, what I mean? What year was that, Clyde? Uh, it might have been about two thousand and two, two thousand and three, or something. Do you know what I mean? But he, he weren't a tramp at that time. Like he, he, he was still living in a flat. Uh, it weren't far from Calf Seaver. Yeah. And, yeah. But you could tell he was on. He was up in that special Bruce yet. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it, it were deteriorating then. Yeah, it's uh, that's what Paul Junior said to me. He said from from the uh, from obviously he killed someone. Paul Paul never spoke to him again. Um, but he said our dad from 2003 was just waiting for death. Um, you know, he'd been homeless. Uh, I think that picture where Paul's got his beard and he's got all the coat on, he's giving it the jazz hands. So that yeah. was took November 2004. So yeah. it's hard to believe that he was alive for two and a half years after that. And we're looking at that picture, you think you couldn't get any worse, but he did. I yeah. mean, I know you you went a few times to try and find him, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. A few times we went to Wakefield trying to find him. So his sister in market, she told us whereabouts he hung out and that uh, bus station, this shopping centre. Uh, we went, we could never find him. And mm. 
we did try as well. Do you know what I mean? We were asking people, where did Paul knock uh, anger bar? And they were telling us we were going and we just couldn't find him. Just wanted to help him out a bit, but it, it weren't to be. And like when we went, we I wanted to know where his funeral were. I couldn't even find out when his funeral were. I wish I'd have been in touch with Neil Malpass at the time because, like, he went to funeral, didn't he, Neil? Yeah, he did. Yeah, so I had to drove to Donner and gone with him because me and Neil get on all right. He's a mate of mine. And uh, mm. I'd have gone with him, but like you said last time, it was a lot of rush hush, weren't it, about the funeral? Well, it was done on purpose because I remember Paul's sister said to me, she said, we didn't want to make it like a circus. Yeah. Um, you know, you've only got to look at Ronnie Cray's funeral. Um, yeah. You know, Lee Duffy's. There was yeah. thousands of people there, and yeah, you know, I am. Um, I mean, there is a few tales in. In you read the books, um, so I don't really want to tell that. But you know, so what's your opinion then? Of you know, there is people just crawling out the woodwork now, making the most ridiculous, absurd, utter bullshit. And people yeah. are just sick and they just believe anything, <laughs> you know. But what's your opinion, Clive? Because you knew him. The, Paul's, or my opinion on Paul. Mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a load of bollocks, isn't it? Like, like you said, people are just coming out and woodworking. Like, the views. Yeah. And Brian Cockrell is fucking, he's just talking that much bullshit. And the people he's got subscribed to him are absolute fucking clowns they ain't got a clue and they're just agreeing with him for what he's been in his past he's not that guy no more brian he knows it like i speak to people up north i speak to people all over the place about well i have done about brian and like brian like he had one unlicensed fight and got fucking beat with a novice do you know what i mean but he won't tell you that he won't tell you that, but that come from a really good source. Yeah, but well, no. my, my friend watched that, and he said it was embarrassing. He yeah. said, "You know what?" He said, "It they were, it was just it was shocking. It was it was embarrassing." Um, I, bet I bet we're talking about the same guy here as well. Who yeah. told you? Yeah, but um, I mean, someone's asking Clyde. Someone's saying, "Could you tell him the story about Bronson?" I don't know what he's on about. When I was in old jail. Uh, Sykes, were on special unit with Bronson. And Bronson started picking on a killer who we're never getting out, Fred Law. And Sykes, saw him. Now, I didn't see this, but there was a screw outside the special unit and he turned around and said to me, and to two other guys who were in my company, that Sykes here just made Bronson sit on a chair facing the wall. And if he turned around and talked to anybody else until end of association, he were going to fill him in. Now, a screw tell me, tell us that. Sykes here didn't tell me that. Sykes here doesn't brag about any fights he's had, anything like that. Like Sykes here beat Roy Shaw twice. In, I think, I don't know if it was 72 or 73. Uh, it was 1973. I mean, I, I, I'd rather not comment on that because I'm good friends with Gary. But yeah. um, there was a prison officer from Hull Prison who who, um, who did tell me that story and it kind of does add up, but, you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, well, Joe Pyle was saying, like, when I went to see Joe Pyle, Tony Lambriano, uh, Roy Shaw, I asked Roy Shaw the question. But I put it in a nice way. I said to Roy, I went, you and Sykes, it was an old jail. Because of both of your reputations, did you ever come to any blows? And Roy Shaw said to me, Paul Sykes was too big for me, which was a perfect answer. And when he said it, Joe Pyle clenched his fists when I mentioned mm -hmm. Paul Sykes. Now, I got to know Roy Shaw, and he was a very nice man. But I didn't know him then, so if he'd have come out with some bollocks, because I knew the story, I would have asked him about it. But he came out and said, Paul's too big for me. So I left mm. it at that, you know what I mean? But later on, 
well, I knew, and I got told that Paul beat Roy twice. One lasted 13 seconds, and the second one lasted 20 seconds. Mm. But Paul was a fighter. Yeah. He was a <clears throat> Del Delroy did tell that story as well, didn't he? Delroy was Delroy watched one of them. Um, yeah. Someone's asking, Clyde. Someone's just asking you. Uh, did Paul get beat by Larry Parks from Hull? Have you heard that? I don't know. Like I've never heard of that one. Right. I don't know. No, I don't. I've never heard of Larry Parks. Yeah. And I Someone's asking about the Terry Mitchell. Um, that, so that was 1979. Terry Mitchell was the reason why Paul Sykes never fought Lenny McLean. Yeah. When, um, when, when uh, the and, I mean, I, I did. I did meet Terry a few times, and he said, <clears throat> he said, I was going. I must have seen Paul probably towards the end of his life. And he said, I couldn't believe. He said he was just sat there drinking cider with a woman. Yeah. And I was just looking at him thinking, wow, I couldn't believe that was the bloke that gave me the hardest fight ever um, in 1979. Two guys what were pissed up. They had a brawl and that was it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, you can't really count fights when you're drunk because, like, I know hard cases who've been knocked out on the streets when they've been drunk, do you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. can't really class them as proper fights, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah, but Terry got best of him that day. But like I said, they were, they were keckled. So whether you count it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so someone's asking you, Clyde, what actually happened with Paul Sykes and Fred the Head Mills? So the, <clears throat> there was a couple of there was a couple of situations, wasn't there? Yes, uh, um Fred the Ed Mills from Newcastle was, in his own right, a tough guy. Mm -hmm. But every time him and Sykes he met, uh, I was in Canteen Q, that's right, uh, in Leeds Prison, on centre. There's a big, there used to be a big space where Canteen were. And Sykes here and Freddie Mills met, they started fighting, which they always did. And 90% of the time, it would be Freddie Mills what started it. Mm -hmm. And Sykes, he just packed him. It, different gravy. Like, they had a few fights then. And, but I've seen things saying that Freddie Mills beat Paul, but he didn't. This is coming from these sickos of the uh, North East, you know what I mean, saying this, but he didn't. He never beat him. Sykes used to pagger him. It was like Sykes, he fainted me. He pagged me. Do you know what I mean? And that's how it works. Freddie Mills never beat him. Sykes uh, beat him up. Uh, Steve Adams, I think you've got that story out of the book, mate. Uh, Rod, Rod, Roger Tide was a, a boxer which um, Alex Dean brought in to, to spar with Paul in 1973. And, you know, he got to the semi-finals of the ABAs. Back then, the ABAs was more than it is today. Yeah. You know, if you won the ABAs, then... You were the best in Great Britain, where today the best five in the in the division they don't even go in because they're all on the GB squad and they're funded by the lottery. Um, even Mitchell said in Jamie's book he didn't want to trade. Yeah, do, do you know I spoke to a guy who watched it and he said Mitchell just literally headbutted him about fifteen times and um, Sykes is who was the wrestler who Sykes was mates with Clyde again Mick Mick Summer wasn't it? Yeah. Mick Sellers, he went and got Paul a share and, and they just went out drinking again. Um, what's your, what's your favourite story? Because Sykes he used to come through with Sheffield to see you, Clyde, didn't he? Yeah, like like I said last time, my favourite story about Paul is when we went to Blackpool uh, and we'd gone to see Ronnie, Ronnie Telthorpe. He's gone uh, now, hasn't he? Yeah, he's gone. Most of them's gone now. David Dunford's gone as well? David Dunford, he's gone. Uh, and we went to, well, to start off, because me and my missus went through to see him and Calf. So he asked to, he asked me to drop him, uh, to take him to Jewsbury, which is just across M1 from mm. Wakefield. So anyway, we ended up in fucking Salford first, uh, a guy called Rab Carruthers' house. Yeah, he was a Glaswegian gangster. He's dead now. Big name. Yes, that's where we ended up to start off with. And uh, we went to see him. Then we ended up in Blackpool. So we, I, I'm having to watch me drink because, like, I'm driving. 
So we've walked in a pub with Ronnie and there's a midget. So Sykes has run up to midget and grabbed him and said, I'm entering a midget tossing competition. I want to practice with you. Mm. Fucking midget's <laughs> face like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But 10 I mean, minutes later, them, they them two names, <clears throat> them two names, David Dunford and Ronnie Trellfall. Um, so if anyone's read Sweet Agony, their names are littered. And thankfully, we well, I got an e- um, an interview with them, thanks to you, Clyde, a few years back. Uh, and they're in the books. And I don't yeah. think you could get any any closer to Paul Sykes than, than them kind of characters. And a lot yeah. of them these days, a lot of them are all gone. I was with John Spencer the other day. Uh, you know, he's, he's getting on a bit and... You know, and all that's left is kind of a lot of people just making utter bullshit just yeah. for the views. You know, I, th- this person is kind of using little bits of my story, but just making the rest up. <laughs> yeah, I, I hated me, Jamie. Like, and do you know the thing is, like, I've commented on his podcast and he has not even answered me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I've asked to do a podcast with him, a chat, nothing's, nothing. You know, no shouting or being aggressive or all like that, just to have a chat. That's what I said to him. And he hadn't, he hadn't come back to me. And, but now I'm going to stop watching his podcast because it's just shit. He talk, talk, talks about me daily and I don't, I don't even see it. I just, yeah. I've got better things. Uh, being invited but, into Home House Prison myself and Paul Venice next couple fan, of weeks. And he might fancy you, Jamie. <laughs> You know, so it's uh, do, do you know someone's asking? <clears throat> someone's asking. So there was only two incidents I'm aware of. Sykes met Duffy. One was literally a month before he died. Um, Duffy's best friend was there. The Spenceleys were there. I put it in the book. Uh, Lee was 19 years young. So Duff Paul was 46. <laughs> Duffy was 65. So he was 19 years difference. And yeah. Duffy, um, Paul tried to shake his hand and Duffy turned his back and just kind of danced. And, and the other time was was the prison officer and it was in 1988 and Nick Manners kind of was in there at the time and he said they were both in, but they're on the opposite sides of Durham prison. So um, the, the screw was there and he said, basically Sykes was there and Duffy was there and there was a big line and that was it. But the other guy just makes big stories up and... I'd rather listen to the screw and I'd rather listen to Lee Duffy's best friend yeah. and the Spenceleys who were there and who watched it. You know, well, so that's another story Brian's saying. He's saying that uh that Sykes were raping YPs in Durham jail. So Duffy's seen Sykes and he shouted out to Sykes, uh, come on, Sykes, he come and rape me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's it's just it's it's a comedy, it's like a fucking carry on. Program watching him. He's, he's, yeah. he's clearly mentally ill. Mentally ill. I just ignore him. He's, you it's, know, he, he it's, makes it up. He's deluded. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You can I'm tell the way he's looking, the way he's talking, and the way he's mm. fidgeting. His hands are all over the place all the time. And I used to like Brian Cockrell. I used to love watching him. Yeah, I used to love watching him. But since you could tell, not just with Sykes, but with others, but that it were fabricating. But not only that, he was telling lies on top of lies. And is it is it serious shit? And I had to comment when he were on about Paul, because like I said, me and Paul got on together, but I'm not going on his no more now, because it, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, I think he's just a bullshitter. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, he's um he's making things up to get the views and the clickbait. But you know, our books, Clyde. I mean, you've read them. Um, <clears throat> there's been a, a film written which is going to cost at least two million pounds. Yeah. You know, the Duffy one, Neil Neil Booth, Paul Bryan, the guy who held Duffy when he died, said you got them books bang on. Yeah. But he's saying no, no, this and that, and the guy only knew him for like. 10 weeks, mm. you know, but he's, he's, he talks like he's been his best friend for 20 years. Neil Brown, everyone, and everyone, a lot of people have said that, but, you know, I've got things going on with lots of different things, and I haven't got time to sit and tell lies on a YouTube channel. Um, did, Brian, did Brian have a fight with uh, Duffer? He says he did, didn't he? Uh, 
uh, there's two people who watched it, and one told me and and Neil Bove a very very different story. Um, yeah. And that's I don't even want to talk about him, but it's very very different. And maybe maybe so maybe the guy who heard it with me will say it once. But it's very different to how. But of course, dead men can't talk, can they? No, can't say. Uh, so story. someone's this asking you a question, Clyde. Could you ask Clyde if Paul ever mentioned in his younger years at home with his folks, was it a happy home or not? Ah, oh, no, you couldn't tell. They weren't like his father used to beat him up, didn't he? His dad he used to clip him a lot. Uh, plus, his dad would have screw up Wakefield Prison as well. Yeah. So, do, do you know what though? The mother was really quite sadistic as well. I mean, she was like a man size nine nine feet. Um, <laughs> and I remember Paul Paul's sister saying to me, she used mm. to beat him up with. Glass bottles. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you know, I think I've said it before. My opinion is today in the 21st century, he would have been put into care. Yeah. Um, I spoke to someone, one of his very, very best friends from his childhood, one of the rallies, and they said he was made to be like that. He was like Frankenstein. Yeah. And obviously at the end, the end product was, was madness, chaos, mayhem, and everything rolled into one. Mm. So, Clyde, last word to you, mate. Um, I don't, I, th I don't think it'll ever stop. I think the snowball will go on and on and on and on. And you know, it's very hard to to, to pick between what's lies and what's not. Um, you knew him. You experienced it. You were there. You were there in three different prisons. Was there any raping going on? None. And yeah. uh, listen, like, if they had been, I'd say it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But so did they I. Were none. They were none. It's a load of bollocks. It's some day just carrying on what he's heard, making other little stories up, bringing Duffy into it, who's not even here either, to, mm. like, say, yeah, I did do this, I did do that. Do you know what I mean? It's just a load of bollocks, and he's just trying to get his clicks and his views. And whatever money he gets off YouTube, that's what he's doing. Uh, I find it scandalous, and I'm not going to watch him no more. Yeah, same. I, I give up. Well, I never did. But a month ago, I just thought, you know what? I don't care what lies you say. I don't care. No one's suing me. No court. Yeah. There's nothing. I've been dismissed from free. And, my, and, and anyone who doesn't believe me, you can have a look at Jamie Boyle Lawfer. Yeah. And even ring the court up, use the reference number. But he's still saying that, so I haven't got the time. How many books have you done now, Jamie? Um, <clears throat> I've got 22 out, but I'll have 25 by the end of this year. And he's calling you the false author. <laughs> the fake author. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know what? There was 19 in five years to the week, and yeah. nine of them were Amazon bestsellers. Yeah. Uh, two, two or three of them were obviously signed to be a film. And I'm the mm. fake author. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm the most prolific author from Great Britain. If that's not my... Do you know what? That 19 books in five years. Yeah. I ask, do you know what Stones have said? What don't you sleep? Do you know what I mean? It's like, but... Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what, Clyde? I did ask... <clears throat> I did ask um, one of the prison, prison governors um, from the... Documentary, Phil Wheatley. Um, and I asked the top chief of Wakefield Police a few years back. And he said, yeah. listen, I couldn't stand the man. I absolutely hated Paul Sykes. He says, I knew him when I had to send half the shift down the old Wood Street Nick to deal with him. <clears throat> and I knew him. Um, the last deal in the other film was 2005, 2006. He said a gush of wind would have blew him over. He yeah. said... I hated the man, but he said, I seen his, what was the word, CRB, um, his criminal record, and there was nothing ever. There was yeah. never even any kind of allegations. So yeah. if all this was going on, why was there no, why was there no, like, NFAs? Do you know what I mean? It's just bollocks, isn't it? It's just bollocks. Yeah. People... People telling bollocks so they get clicks. That's all it is. And say even that, when he said uh, he went away field to to fight Sykes, eh? he never told the he never told the true story. What he 
uh, recognise it as the truth because later on he said he went uh, as a deck collector to pick some vases up. Mm. And it's just bullshit, mate. Yeah, he, uh, he said to me, glass elephants or something. And, you know, I used to sit there in his company and when he'd go my head would be battered off the lies i just have to have a lie down um i've never met anyone who tells lies like that man ever in my life and i've met a lot of people but well, again, he's and, just and, on another well, planet I just, I just can't understand how people can watch and not know that he's telling poor kids do you know what i mean it's it's mm. plain to see the way he angles himself the way he talks the way he moves about and it's it's bullshit mate <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but he, he's going nowhere. He's a complete loser, uh, and he doesn't deserve my reaction. And no. um, you know, I'll probably send him a couple of VIPs from the from Leicester Square Red Leicester Square Red Carpet in a couple in a year or two when the film gets done, and you'll be there, Clyde. Um, be there. Yeah, you know. But overall, last last word to you, Clyde. Paul Sykes, sum him up in a couple of paragraphs. I can't sum him up really because he, <laughs> uh, very hard man, he, toughest man I've ever met in my life, and I'm 62 soon next month. Uh, I know he, when he were like drunk, he got sparked out a few times, but that's easy, a drunken man. Like I said before, I think Paul was at his fittest when he were in jail. I never ever saw him get beat in jail ever, mm -hmm. and that little. Supposed to be a little scout or what nailed him, but I never heard of. See, I would know these things because somebody would tell me about it. Sykes won't tell me about it. He never told me about his wins, but it like somebody, somebody would definitely have told me about that loss. And as far as I'm concerned, that didn't happen either. But well, I, I, just, I only heard that. I only heard that Clyde from the bullshitter. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, um, but saying it, Paul, like. A lot of people didn't like him, but if Paul got on with her, he was a great bloke and he never, ever, ever, in drink, not in drink, he never, ever had a go at me, ever. Me and him were friends, like I said earlier, and I wish he was here. Uh, 1978 fitness, and he was going up that fucking end to fucking smarten him up. Because it's mm. shocking, really, what's being said about him. Yeah, and um, do you know what? <clears throat> it's listen. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, I've caused up a, a, a stare. I've kind of brought him back to the life. The city of Wakefield kind of thought they forgot about him, and he's coming. He, he will be. I think he will be an absolute star. Um, yeah. You know that film, especially. You know the eighties band maybe doing the soundtrack. A lot of people are saying, you know, where is it? Where is it? Listen, films take a long time. Yeah. You know, but I think you've probably seen the contract. Um, you're certainly quite close to my business partner, who doesn't really like to be mentioned, so I won't mention him. <laughs> um, that's another question there. So and so said he called Viv Graham out for a fight. <laughs> uh, there you go, mate. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, I like the rally drivers and the uh, the WWE one and everything. And and he could have been British Bulldogs tag team partner. He just deserves to be in the cell, <laughs> locked up. Just, just lies beyond. He should be padded up with Robert Mosler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Never heard anyone in my life tell lies like him, and he actually believes him. He, he actually would pass a lie detector test. <laughs> Most probably. So, but uh, Clyde, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. So I'm glad that you've uh, listen. I didn't know him. I wasn't even alive when most of these things things happened. You did know him. You were in Hull Prison. You were in Durham Prison. You were in Armley Prison. Um, you spent, you know, many years of your youth around this alleged rapist, sexual deviant, wrong and, um, but there's no proof. But if people say it, it gets views and it gets clickbait. Yeah. And it causes hatred as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I'll tell you what, it's, um, 
the film's happening, the documentary's happening, um, and that's that. And I think overall, you know, when you look at so many of the characters, Paul Ferris, the Essex Boys, Genghis Khan, Adolf Hitler, there's been Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gate. There's so many people who've had films. Um, yeah. I've been in London and, and I've met people who hated the craze. Bethnal Green Workman's Club, but mm. because Tom Hardy played him, it's kind of cool and it's all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's been Jack the Ripper films. Um, you know, I think people just at the minute, there's millions, millions of people who've watched the, the, the YouTuber, this guy, a bit strange, talks about punching sharks, and they don't quite understand the story. But no. I think that's all going to change down to Vaughn Civil. Yeah. I nearly said the actor's name. <laughs> Um, that's, you know, it's, it's all going to change by Vaughn Civil and Western Edge Pictures. Um, and that, that guy, I mean, obviously, me and, and my business partner, we kind of like the story. But I spoke to his receptionist about two years back. And she said to me, all he does is walk about, practicing his Yorkshire accent and doing his one-liners and all that. And it's it's gripping, isn't it? Um, yeah. It is gripping. It's a story that you just think, that, that story alone give me a career, started writing books, because without that, Clyde, I mm. would never have written one book. Yeah. You know, I just, after three years, wanting to find out, I just went, pulled my pint, walked in the city of Wakefield, walked in Paul Sykes at large, walked in Sweet Agony, and, you know, here we are now, years later, and it's kind of become, but, you know, it's happened, and it was real, and certainly, certainly marked his name down in Yorkshire folklore forever. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's a legend, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Clyde, it's been an absolute pleasure. Big thank you to everyone watching. Um, yeah, listen, there's a lot of there's a lot of clout chasers on YouTube and they can say anything. I could do a video now and I could say the worst kind of things. And, oh, God. But I haven't got time and I have a bit of decency about me. Do you know what I, mean? I don't want to sit and tell lies. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So... Uh, I've got things to do, but Clyde, you knew him, mate. It's an absolute pleasure, and uh, you know, I'd, I I would tend to believe your version of events over over certain other people. I've got no reason to talk bullshit, mate. I, I can only tell you what I've seen and what's true. Do you know what I mean? I've mm -hmm. never seen any of that crap. You know what I mean? Like, and I would know if he were fucking bending YPs over and knocking them out and giving them tobacco for his services. It's a load of bollocks, mate. Trust me. Yeah, because <clears throat> we did speak to Delroy, and um, there's even there's even been things like that with him, um, mm. of certain kind of nonsense. I, obviously, I'm doing Michael Shower's book as well, and um, I spent a bit of time with Michael, and I, I told him some of the things because he'd been in prison with Sykes, and uh, and he just started laughing. These kind of stories are just mythical snowball and. Yeah. You know, it, it bits add on, and and it, you know, and then all, all of a sudden, it's like the story of the Loch Ness monster. They just you know, trying to believe him. It's like the abominable snowman. It's easy to say it now he's dead, isn't it? Do you know mm. what I mean? Well, even now, I would, I do would he be now, Jamie? Uh, he was born. <clears throat> he was born in forty six, so you'd have been seventy six. Seventy six. Yeah. Uh, well, it'd be too old. Not really old, is he? You know, when he, when he died, he was um, 60 and 10 months. But yeah. to be honest, Clyde, he looked about 88, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Mm. Mm. You know, the, I, I know a lot of people. I know the names of people who beat him up. Um, and, pe you know, people said, you, you didn't beat Paul Sykes up. You just beat a shell of a man up who That's used it. to be Paul Sykes. You know, but, and he had that name where people would go around bragging, saying, oh, trying I just beat Paul Sykes up. Trying to get a reputation. Mm, really you know, life. and it was, you know, particularly from the years of, like, 2004 onwards, it was like a yeah. sport in Wakefield. He yeah. was, I mean, in, in Thorn Park, he was set on fire, lighter fluid. Um, I remember talking to one shopkeeper one day, and she said... Young lads would walk, just crack eggs on him, and he'd be walking about in a haze with one chew on, one off, and covered in shells. And you know, listen, I don't. Did he? Did, I wouldn't like to think anyone deserved the ending he got like that. But I think if he did any wrong in his life, he certainly paid the price, didn't he? Oh yeah, 
yeah, he's paid price and he's gone now. At least he doesn't have to suffer no more living fucking rough, does he? No, what I mean? Yeah, talking, yeah. All, talking all assholes what he has took. I, nobody should, nobody deserves that. I know he might have been a cunt in his life and he most probably mm-hmm. chinned half at Youngen's dad's what were doing it. But like you said, he, uh, they, were, they weren't beating Paul Sykes up, they were beating an old shell up or a. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, there was, um, I've got it in the book, I can't remember his name. So about a year before he died, uh, there was a, a shopkeeper and he was opening his shop up and uh, he said, I could just turn around. <clears throat> and he said, it wasn't like, you know, everyone's kind of a bit obsessed with Paul Sykes. Then, in them days, he was just Paul. He was like the Wakefield Cathedral. He was just part of the furniture. Yeah. And he said, I turned around and I went... What the fuck are you looking at? And he stood there, rocking back and forth with this kind of special bro. And the bloke, I can't remember his name, it's in Fever Agony, I think. And he said, I said, what the F are you looking at? You has been. And he said, he said, you know something? He said, he didn't have to get me because he said, he just said, better a has been than a never was been. <laughs> and, and the guy, he just sat and thought about it. And he went, he's right. You know, he might be an old has been, mm. but, you know, he's, he's been inspired. Joe Fraser and Leon Spinks and pictures yeah. of Don King and he is him opening his shop up for another day and, and it was kind of like, like thought provoking. I listened to that what Richard Dunn said about Sykes that Sykes he were giving him full power and Richard Dunn never got out in second gear. <laughs> mm, yeah, I don't, I I mean, don't think he, that for one minute. Here's a question for you, Clyde. Why didn't his friends help him? I mean, I know the answer to this, but. You can answer it. Why didn't they help him? Yeah. Uh, well, didn't somebody try to help him? Didn't didn't he get? Didn't yeah. Uh, well, it was it was Maureen and um, Roy Burnley. So they paid his rent, and um, do you know that picture where he's all short, <clears throat> yeah. short haired with a beard and stubble, and he's got yeah. scabs on his face. So that they took him in in 2005, um, and the bit you know basically done everything for him, give him clothes and all this, done his flat off. And at that point, I mean, they said to me, they said that he was used to living in the wild, and he just trashed mm-hmm. his flat off. Um, and and just you couldn't help him. Even his sister said to me, mm-hmm. he always knew best, even when he was living in a cardboard box or on a skiff. Yeah. He always thought he knew best, and maybe 20 years ago he did, mm. intelligence, articulate. But, you know, the guy's living homeless, so how could anyone, you know, he's, he, he, a good day to him was getting a tenner so he could go and buy four Some cans of special brew. Yeah, I think that would it. Like, uh, it only thing, if you went to help him, like, I, I, I think Paul was settled in his ways. Like like you said, he, he just want a bit of money and then he want to get off and get his booze, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do, do you know one thing? I do know, because I spoke to his um, uh, carer and he was suffered from, um, there's, a, there's a term for it, but I forgot. Do you know, like DTs? Yeah. He would hallucinate from drink and he would think like there's spiders on him and bees on him. Um, you know, so not only was he like living homeless and the kids were torturing him, but when he didn't drink, it made him very, very ill. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very sad. And I, t- I tell you what, it's going to take one hell of an actor to play him. I wish you were alive to see it. Mm. That'd be good. Mm. Yeah. Do you know Kenny, the old, the old um, Taylor from the documentary, he said to me, he said... He come in my shop and he said, you know what, Kenny, in years to come, they'll write books on me and they'll make a film. And he told me that. I spoke to him a couple of times. He died a year ago. You know, mm. I'll never I'll never forgive our mate for not going through and seeing him. Yeah, he and, told um, me he'd be more famous. You know, he he would always say that. Yeah. He told me he'd be more famous when he were dead. Is that what and he said? Dead. Yeah, that's what he said to me. And th- that weren't in shovel either. That were outside that when he were like, we were drinking co- quite a bit, do you know what I mean? Uh, mm. But yeah, that's what he said to me, and he's fucking right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. People um, remember, people so, remember Paul for a lot of years. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you know, I think if I didn't come along, I think someone else would have come along and done it maybe five, ten years down the line. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're only 12 falls, you're David Dumford's, they're all gone now. There's quite a few others gone as well. Yeah. Uh, so someone's asking a question. So the film is going to be called, the same as the documentary, it's going to be called Paul Sykes at Large. So if you type in Paul Sykes film, you'll be able to go on Western Edge Pictures website and the official blurb synopsis for the film is there. Uh, I kind of think it's going to be a bit like Rita Sue Bob 2. It sounds like it's, well, it's kind of it's kind of classed as a dark comedy, but then Bronson's is a, is a dark comedy as well. Yeah. Yeah, some of that. Yeah. yeah. So, Clyde, it's I love you I'm just there. make sure you ain't got a pair of queers with him, what's acting with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the last word, I will give you the last word now, I'll shut off. Over you, Clyde. Right. Uh, thanks always for look on me. the bright side of life. Yes, always look on the bright side of life. Thanks for having me on, Jamie, and thanks for everybody who's watching. Yes, yeah, and it's just nice to listen to some factual things. Everything I say Everything I say, mate, is true. I don't talk fucking bullshit. Know what yeah. I mean? And, like, when he's slating my mate off, I wouldn't only do this for Paul. If it were any of my mates, what well, weren't here to look after themselves, I'd be the same for them as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, less bullshit. Well, do you know what? When the film and the documentary starts happening, um, then people will still be on YouTube telling the same stories about how they're going to sue me at court next month and next month and next month. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's a nonce and the wrong and all this. And, you know, mm. we've got bigger things to do. That's it, mate. You crack on. God bless, Clyde. Love you, mate. Care, mate. Cheers, everybody.